you've gone back and looked at the film against Clemson, and you did find some positives, correct? Yeah, no, I think there's always good things you can take out of a game, I and mean, it's never as bad as you think it is. But, um, you know, I thought we, like I said, I mean, I thought we executed better in the second half than we did the first half. And, you know, we were going to have to be perfect um, on defense and our run fits and um, not giving up some of the explosive plays that we did and tackling in space, and we weren't. And, and obviously, if you're not against those guys, um, it's going to turn into something ugly um, if you're not right. In a, in a typical Southern Conference game, you usually can get on the ground. So um, we weren't that far off, but we, we were, and, and it happened to you know be what it was. So we're ready to move on. Mercer is a very intriguing opponent. They've, uh, they've been in the conference for four, about five years, and they've never beaten Wofford. But almost all the games have been very close, very hard fought. What do you see in your, your initial look at Mercer on both sides of the ball? Well, I think they're going to they're always going to find a way to be productive on offense. You know, I think they do a really good job of putting their quarterbacks and their skill guys and their running backs in position to to make plays and to to move the change and score points and keep our offense off the field. And then defensively, I've seen a group this year that's got a, a better identity as the season has gone on. Um playing better um, at times and some of the numbers are a little bit skewed, but um it's a group that can definitely give you issues. Um Uh, for an offense so um, they're going to be well coached they're going to be prepared to play Um, coach coach Lamb's been in in this league a long time and and knows what it takes to win and um, will play us tough specifically a quarterback you got to look at Kalen Riley last year and now he's back in because Riddle's hurt Uh, he'll be a year older a year riser they set up the pass very well with Devis and running the ball now so is it kind of like a lot of situations, a pick-your-poison type of situation? Do you choose one to shut down? Do you try to play it pretty balanced? We'll try to play it balanced, but, I mean, you're exactly right. They have the ability to run the football, which they run the ball pretty effectively right now, and then that obviously creates some more plays and things for your for your quarterback and, and for your, obviously, wide receivers. So um, that's all part of the, the game plan, part of the chess match, and, and we'll, we'll try to play it you know even as, as we can. What is the challenge this week in preparation in terms of refocusing, resetting after the big stage at Clemson? But these three are the three that you've been looking forward to for quite some time. So as the week progresses, how does that mental sharpening take place? Well, I think, I mean, we've got a we've got a group that's pretty mature. I mean, I think they understand what we're what we're getting ready to get into here for these three games. I mean, they they know the goal. Uh, they want it as bad as anybody. Uh, we've already had guys that are in watching tape um, on their day off, you know, trying to get some more in. So all those things are a group that, you know, they understand the big stage of Clemson. They understand what that game was, and they're ready to move on. And, and their goal is to, you know, to win another Southern Conference championship and then get into the playoffs. So we've got three weeks to do that. We've positioned ourselves well, and now we just got to worry about us and executing um, really a lot less about the team that we're facing. It's just more about how we're going to go out and execute. Will there be positives that you guys can get for playing a team like that, even though the score didn't go the way you wanted to? Things you can look back on and say, eh, long run, that'll make us better. Yeah, I feel like um, just being able to play a team of that caliber, it's a, it's just good for everybody because, you know, um, some people say that like, you want to make it to the NFL, and to like, if you're in the NFL, you don't play people like that. So to be able to play people – like that it's, it's good like um win or lose it's just good to be able to, to tee up against guys like that and now you got to completely get back into the socon mindset talk about mercer i know you've only played one game against them last year and it was a hard-fought game but these are the three that you guys have been kind of pointing towards now that they're here what do you expect this week of practice to be like in terms of intensity um practice the intensity and practice should be a should be high because, you know, um, we really got to get all three of these if we want to, you know, cash our ticket to go to the playoffs. And we want it to be in our hands. So it practice should be, like, real focus. And we have to play our best game against these guys just to make sure that we can do what we want to do. Is there any danger, Nathan, of looking past Mercer? Coaches usually do a pretty good job of not letting you guys do that. But Furman's out there, your biggest rival. So how do you keep that from happening, not overlooking the next opponent? You just can't, like, uh, Coach always tell us to take it day by day, you know, week by week, game by game. And so uh, what's in front of us right now is Mercer. We have to get past Mercer before we want to look further because if we don't get – if we don't take care of this week, then we can't worry about the weeks after. 
Final question. We were talking about your role and how it's evolved. Um, you you came in recruited as a straight, you know, Andre Stoddard like fullback. You're going to take the dive in the triple option, and, and and things have evolved and changed. How comfortable are you with your role in this ever evolving Wofford offense? Um, I'm I'm pretty I'm satisfied. You know, I'm content. Uh, I just want to be able to do what I can to help the team. So like, if I have to if I have to block. 15 times a game, and I might get like two carries, but we still win because of that, man. I'm fine with it. But I'm still like, just the offense in general, like, I'm, I'm still getting comfortable, you know, like, just doing, like, finding my role to help the team. So. It's, it's tough. When you have so many weapons, especially in the backfield, no one's going to get 28 carries. You got eight guys who can carry the ball, but you guys all pick each other up and pull for each other, too, don't you? Yes, sir. Um, we, we have to do that like, because, um, it's just, it's a team sport, you know, and everybody everybody is want the same the same goal and we can't have one person carry the load. So we have to dis- even like almost not evenly, but distribute it again well, amongst everybody. Yeah. Question for you, same thing. The man, the physicality of that game Sunday or Saturday. How do you bounce back? How do you deal with it? Is it is it an issue at all facing, you know, the size of the Clemson guys and get ready to play another ball game six, seven days later? Uh, I mean, I feel like it's not it's not really about, like, the size of the guys. Like, you know, it's really just about kind of – like, we play big guys every week is the way I see it and kind of it's just the number of reps that you take. So, you know, after the Chattanooga game, I'd say I'm about the same amount of soreness as I was after the Clemson game, you know. Was it a good experience, though, getting to play in front of 80,000 people, getting to test yourself a little bit, both team-wise and certainly individual-wise as well? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like, the crowd, you know, that's that's always going to be crazy. And, you know, it's, it's an experience that, you know, not a lot of people will ever get to have and not a lot of people will have again, you know. Um, but, you know, just playing against guys of that caliber, like, it'll only make you better. That's, that's how I feel about it. Moving on to Mercer, um, I was just telling Coach, these are hard-fought games, and I guess any game at this stage of the season is going to be a hard-fought game. So mentally refocusing it and getting to the task at hand against Mercer, how do you guys go about that? Well, I mean, we know that any conference game is going to be hard to come by, especially one on the road, um, you know. So we're, we're going to prepare for this game like we would any other game, you know. And you asked before about, you know, uh, you know, looking ahead to, you know, Furman and Citadel and it's not it's not like that because we know that, you know, every every conference team is like can beat any conference team on a given day. If you look at what happened with VMI and Western last week and I mean you look at VMI season throughout, like they've they've beaten some teams that are supposed to be the absolute best and then they lose the you know, the bottom of the conference teams and so it's just any anything can happen on any given day. So we're just gonna prepare as such. I want to ask you about the the, the depth and in, in your defensive line room. Uh, you know, you lose a couple of big guys at the beginning of the season. You guys really kind of came together, getting some contributions from some people that maybe they didn't think they were going to play that much as freshmen. Right. And, and you're you're one of the guys kind of holding it all together there. Right. How has the defensive line grown? I guess from the beginning of the season to now. Um, I mean, I think that we've had we've had guys that, like you said, have gone from expecting not to play at all, not to get any reps, to you know, say a guy, a guy like Jacob Drag, like he wasn't supposed to be getting any reps this year, and he played a good bit against Clemson. And, and if I say so myself, he did pretty well, you know. And then you had guys like me, where this is my first year, like really starting. I played, I started one game last year, and I took reps in a few games, and now I'm supposed to be the leader of the group, and I feel like. It's just losing those top end guys like Mikel and Thad. I mean, I just feel like it's made everyone just grow up a little bit, and you know, I think we're all better because of it. Final question for you: um, As we were talking earlier, you don't come from a college football hotbed up in in, in northern Maine. Your experience coming to Wofford, getting to play in the South where football is almost religion. How's this been so far? Have you, do, do you feel acclimated now? Are you a part Southerner? I mean, I mean, yeah, I've definitely picked up, picked up a few phrases and stuff like that, saying y'all and Mike could and <laughs> that, that kind of thing. But, you know, the football, from the football standpoint, like it was a big learning curve, but I feel like I've really come into my own. And, you know, we've got really good coaches here that have taught me, you know, you know, technique, and I feel like as long as I just take that and use it in the game, like, it doesn't really matter what my background was. Like, I'm here now, and I'm, you know, doing my thing. 